would be like if it had yellow spots on it, so you have to construct it. Well, I thought it was pretty obvious that if I know where I remember things, then the other side must be constructed. That's an interesting exercise, but it's a waste of time as far as I'm concerned. All I do with people is find out where the bat is and where the bat is. Unless I suddenly see them talk to themselves and I just get an ink on that. You've gone inside. If you're, looking for, if you're looking for a line, might there be a place where somebody talks themselves into lying down here before they can go up there to lie? Well, I'll tell you what happens with lies. It's dead easy. Seasoned liars will... They can't force the IX's and Q's unless they know them. Mm. But what they've been attempting to do with special forces and undercover operatives is teach them how to rewire this. Mm. It doesn't last very long. Mm -hmm. This is so hard. We're talking about hard wiring. This is so hard wired into the program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can change it for a while, but then it's like you. I was asking you about your car. You knew what I was doing because I was talking about I saw so you went, <laughs> and then I, then I just went change the ball. Anyway, so oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> his head nearly fell off. <laughs> it did, didn't it? At least saw it first, I think. Yeah. And it was so blatantly obvious. So you catch people out very easily. And at the end of the day, we're only doing this to increase rapport with people. The sort of people we're talking about, we're not looking to catch a liar out. Um, if we're using it in the context of communication or therapy or business or whatever, you, all you're doing is getting more and more rapport. And of course, from a therapeutic point of view, if you can work out what somebody's strategy is for doing something bad to themselves, like not being able to get up in the morning, then it's just a simple use of the imagination. Well, actually, if I change this to that, that'll make I feel different. And you know what? If that hadn't worked, I'd just done something else. But what locks people's minds in? You know, you see, you see the world, and you, you know, I've, I've travelled a lot. We see different cultures, and, and it's so interesting to see what locks people's minds. See, internal dialogue going now. Even people that are fucked up are really interested. Mm -hmm. You know, you think, but, but, but what is it that locks the mind? Wow. I mean, what is it? What triggers it? What triggers somebody to, you know, eat chocolate every time they see it? Conditioning, anchoring, dead easy. I used to love chocolate. Used to do it all the time. I had an anchor that involved putting pepper on the car, and buying chocolate for me. Brilliant. I, d I was doing a course with Mandler, and he said, um, "We're doing the thing on phobias." He goes, "Bob, do you have any phobias?" Because he said, uh, "Have you done your phobia cue on your guy?" I went, yeah, he's playing with the snakes over there. And he went, oh, good, good job. Have you got any phobias? No, nah, I don't have any phobias. None? I went, no, no, he told me, do you want some? <laughs> oh, he goes, you can have a phobia. I get one in my mother-in-law. She can't get out of the house. <laughs> phobia, fucking agoraphobia. Stopped her coming out. She doesn't see me anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right, Richard. But he said, no, you can give phobias. And he said, no. <laughs> he said, uh, do you have any compulsions or anything like that then? And I said, yeah, yeah, chocolate. I love chocolate. Uh, okay, what's wrong with that? And I said, well, it'd be good not to eat so much chocolate that I'm eating. He goes, okay, okay, so I need chocolate. So I was having a chat with him. I literally, this, I swear to God, five, seven minutes maximum. I'm having this conversation. Like and chocolate. Like chocolate, telling them compulsions. He's, he's chatting away to me, right? And I said, so, yeah, yeah. And he goes, okay, but I uh, it's fucking interesting, isn't it? I went, yeah, it is really. <laughs> anyway, seminar continued. I came out of the seminar, walked past this booth that was selling newspapers, which I, I, I the third day into this, I was buying a newspaper, read it on the bus, on, on the way to my place of staying at my mates. And um, I would always grab a Kit Kat or a Mars bar, and I was sitting on the bus, reading the paper, I went, oh shit, I forgot some sweets. And I'll have someone I get round to his house. So I got round to his house. He said, I'll put a load of biscuits out for you, Bob. I know what you like, chocolate biscuits, blah, blah, blah. And I went, oh, cheers, man. I ate one. And I was reading the paper and watching the telly. And he goes, Rachel, he hasn't eaten the biscuits? Is there anything wrong with them? I went, huh? She goes, you always eat them all? I put the whole lot out for you, because that's what I did. It's not one, I went, bar of chocolate, the lot. <sighs> now, I'll eat chocolate. But I'll eat it, yeah, okay, I will eat the whole bar, but I won't eat it every day. It's like, ah, fancy it, I'll get it. It was bizarre how it worked as well. I reckon I access and cues had something to do with that.
Definitely. But he's, but he's a bastard, isn't he? That bloke that was violent and told him he was violent, this guy was violent, and Batman walked in, and he was a massive guy. Batman said, look, just calm down. Because if you don't calm down and make it so that every time you get angry, you'll shit yourself. <laughs> the guy went, that's violent. <laughs> and the bloke, he left the bloke. Every time he lost his temper, he had to go to the loop. Well, I saw Bandler on a... There's a really old the Marshall tape. He timed it down. This yeah. bloke couldn't... Uh, had no more yeah. violent yeah. 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 happens. Every time he did it, he had an overwhelming compulsion to have a dog. Shit. <laughs> Amazing. Have a look, there's a set of tapes, there's a set of tapes called the Marshall tapes, Batman, really young, really cantankerous, really cheeky, with two psychologists who brought, they, yeah, the Marshall the tapes, they set this thing up with Bandler because they were literally wanting to set him up on TV, so he could look a fool, and they said, uh, we want you to bring one guy in, uh, you're going to get over an hour and a half to work with him on TV, and want to see how you do it, he went, yeah, that'd be great. So they turned up with three people, three patients, half an hour tape. And they went, oh, sorry, Richard, we've only got half an hour tape now, uh, but we've got three guys. And Bonner goes, oh, shit. And they must have gone, ah. He goes, oh, okay, so when I finish with these guys, what shall I do with all the rest of the time? <laughs> and they went, mm -hmm. cocky bastard. <laughs> One of the guys, <laughs> he's a pro player. One of the guys had a, a his psychiatrist brought him in, because he had, um, uh, when he heard a cough, <coughs> yeah, you get paralysis in his leg. <coughs> hysterical paralysis, right? He heard a cough, hysterical paralysis in the leg. The other guy uh, was mildly depressed. And the other one, schizophrenic. schizophrenic or something like that. And he worked with them for about 20 minutes. And he gave the psychiatrist who brought the guy with the hysterical paralysis, hysterical paralysis in his leg when the patient coughed. He did, yeah. He did. The guy's getting so he, goes, ah! he says, so if I cough now, and the guy on the Marshall tapes, Bonnie goes, <coughs> like that. And the patient went, oh, that's brilliant. And the psychiatrist is going, oh, ah, ah. He goes, jeez, you've got a real problem there. I call it karma. <laughs> oh, fuck, Richard, don't look at me. <laughs> it's funny, there's a big seminar with Paul McKenna. And we were doing a hypnosis session with Richard. And I was facilitating, I was sitting from the, on the side, like, watching. I was watching Bandler work. Because obviously being an observer, it's great. It's like when you're observing with your, your partners today. It's like, ooh, you a different perspective. I'm watching Richard. And this guy at the front's like, huh? Like that. Bandler goes, yeah, we're talking about hypnosis. But you know the great thing? You think you're going to get hypnotized. And this guy's going, what well, <laughs> And everybody's laughing, like, and he goes, it's not you. It's the guy next to you. He goes really deep. And this guy next to him goes, <laughs> <laughs> That's right, son, all the way down. <laughs> now, if somebody'd like to bring him up here. <laughs> oh, fuck. Brilliant. He plays with the yeah. minds. He said to the group, Does any of you remember being hypnotized? And they went, What? Oh. He went, Does any of you remember not being hypnotized? They went, What? And he could, uh, scrambled everybody's heads, didn't he? Uh, well, I, I did. When I did my practitioner, he, he zoned everybody out for two and a half hours. I can't remember a thing. I looked at the clock, I thought, I mean, he's trancing me out. I knew I was gone. I looked around the room, I was going, oh shit, this is good stuff. And then, <laughs> and then I looked at the clock, went half 12, brilliant. Then I heard him go, okay guys, uh, I'll go for a pee break now, get some water down the next. So you might wanna have coffee, there's some outside. Uh, have a great time, see you in about one hour. And I looked at the clock, half two. And the people were walking out of the seminar were going, um. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. Imagine having that power working on the door, you know, some bloke sweating and you give him a dose of the shits. Oh, yeah. Back in the It's quite amazing. He is quite amazing. Right, now, you're going to grab a partner and you're going to do the eye accessing cues. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. 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 But that yeah. was when I'd relax and stop thinking about myself. Yeah. Mm. Did anybody find that the, the, the longer it was taken to do it, you get more relaxed? You were just chatting. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, and that's you see that it's difficult to start like that, isn't it? Because you're like being told to do an exercise. Mm. Remember when your client comes in, they don't come come in with any of these preconceptions. Mm. They just think I'm in a conversation like everybody else. What they don't know is that they're doing all this with their eyes, all this non-verbal stuff. Yes, where you I found, yeah, straight away that we, we were having such a 
yeah, interesting conversation, but I started to forget what I was looking at. <laughs> That's the trance. And I got real drilled into that. Uh -huh. And then I realised, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be doing that. that. And then I actually picked up on it really quite quickly. Uh huh. Because you were really quite demonstrative with it, right in a natural sense. And when we reversed it, I'm actually more subtle with my Right. So when I visually re remember, I do look up to the right, but it's just a glance. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Slight micro There's no head movement. No. And when that's pointed out to me, I thought, yeah, I know that. I know that. I pick up on that. And I actually found where internal dialogue was on myself. Uh huh. I wanted to really listen. Yeah. Create. So I quickly found all, we found all of mine. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. And I found the two main ones. Sorry, what's your name? Dean. Dean. I found Dean's two main ones, which you said, if you get the two main ones, you know where everything else is. So you look for visually remembering yeah. and kinesthetic. Yeah. And I found those two and got me the picture. And got me quite quickly. So and then as we continued talking again, we were talking about all sorts of stuff. Right. I started to notice them more readily, easily, and that form. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's quite interesting. Good. I mean, from the point of view uh, for the whole group, I mean, uh, has this proved an interesting exercise? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's a, the impact of this uh, cannot be overstated, really. It's quite an important part of the whole process of creating communication effectively and covertly. Because people will talk about eye access and cues, but not really understand them. So everybody's, it, it seems like everybody's read a bit about them that you meet, but when you act, they don't realise that. How well, actually you're supposed to use this and, and, and do, do so I've read a lot of this stuff today. I've read a lot of that. I've read a lot of tons mm. of books. You know, I watched all your material, yeah. you did, and all this stuff. Uh, where me. can you get hold of those from? And lots of other stuff, Joe, it's about kind of stuff. Yeah. I've read lots of stuff. Yeah. And you know, had a grasp. But doing it in a class and getting it presented is Woke up with some of the points. Of course, it will. Massively. Yeah, the books all start to make sense now. I mean, Lee's done already done a course, haven't you? And you've read books on it as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and Danny's done some with me, sort of one on one, a few couple of sessions, wasn't it, really? Uh, and this was his first opportunity to do the whole course properly. Um, so some of the things that we've talked about as well are starting to become more, makes more sense when you're in a group. Um, but I, I, I mean, the stuff we've done so far is all been geared towards rapport building, as all of it is, actually. The whole course is geared towards mm -hmm. that. Um, but I just want to quickly recap, unless anybody's got anything else, any other observation, yeah. I only got one because they've got an hour and I did, and that is that if you if you discuss something that's really passionate in your family, that passion, the person's passion, I think you'll get all the signals far quicker than you would in a generic discussion. Yeah. I just I just went straight to his passion, which is his martial arts future. You just come out like everywhere, you know. Mm -hmm. I think if you hit the passion side, yeah. find where the passion lies, yeah. bump, and I think people will off. Because off they go, don't they? They want to tell you about it. Yeah. I didn't think yeah. ours was quite clear, because we were tending to confuse each other, because we're talking about one thing, looking over here for something else, and then later on, asking something else, and you think they'd be looking over here, but they'd go over there. When we actually talked about it in a bit more detail, you are starting to get... What, clearer results? No, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was there was one. different levels. Oh, right. Okay. Level. You know, it was like you maybe looked to the left when you would have imagined that we were supposed to be looking to the right uh, to remember, but we were looking to the left for a reason when, it, when we, when we broke it down. When you discovered what it was. Oh, ah, yeah, that's the main yeah. thing, yeah. So, what I'm saying is you haven't come away from it confused about it. No. It's actually made it clearer. Yeah, it's just. Lot it's made us realise how difficult it can be. Right, okay. Yeah. And some people, you will get, I mean, minute movements. When you're talking yeah. about visually remembered, some people will go to feelings and internal dialogue first. Yeah. They'll go, I need to talk about this too. What does it mean? How does that make me feel? Oh, I understand it. And then they'll go to the visual access. So, you know, you won't always get, with, with all people, the same responses because of the different maps and the way people structure the world inside here. You know, it comes through the senses these perceptual filters, if you like, it comes through the senses. The brain makes sense of it and then starts, you know, basically triggering off all these physiological responses. Muscle tonus changes, flaccidity of the face, pupil dilation, movement of the eyes, changing in breathing, changing in speech patterns. I mean, if we look at this thing, I've just quickly written this up, just as a resume, really, of what we've been doing. When you've got visual people, Predominantly visual people, they tend to look up, right and left. 
They speak very, very quickly. They use visual words, right? Just quick one, throw this open. Visual words and statements. Quickly. Any, just shout them out. See what you mean. See what you mean. Look forward. Look forward. That's bright. Can't picture that. Future's bright. Future's bright. Seems a bit muddy to me. Seems a bit muddy to me. Yeah? So they're all visual words. So you listen for those. Yeah, this is a real, you know, I'm asking you what you'll do tonight is you'll start listening for these <coughs> things and people that you're talking to, people you know, people you don't know. Listen, look at what's going on around you. Okay, what about auditory? They tend to look to the left and right, this way. Sometimes use a telephone position. They go, oh, hang on a minute, I need to think about that. And they'll do this, a point of their ears. Yeah, um, they'll speak with a steady rate. In other words, the rate speed of rate in which we need to speak in order to impart information clearly. They breathe middle level. Visual people breathe high in the chest. They breathe mid-level. And they use auditory words. Auditory words such as sounds good. Clear as a bell. Hear what you're saying. I'm not really hearing you. And knock on wood and statements like that. Yeah? Okay. Um, Kinesthetic people, well, they tend to look down, right and left. Okay? They speak slowly. They have to savour every single word. They breathe very low down. We've just been talking about a mutual friend of ours, Dave Perks. And Al says, yeah, he, when he's teaching you knots, he goes into this step. And guess what? He's doing knots. He loves knots. <laughs> He's a physical kinesthetic. Oh, look at the knot. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, a knot, an anorak. Yeah, if there's such a thing. And you can't understand why nobody else likes knots. It's great when it goes wrong for him as well. It's oh, yeah. It's <laughs> such a panic there. Kinesthetic words. I've already mentioned a few of them. Get grasp. Get grasp. I can't feel it. You can feel it. That's two. Things like get a hold of this. Things like touch wood. And touch wood. Can't yeah, there you go. Grasp it. Can't grasp it. Yeah, you know, get the grips with. Feel what you're saying. Yeah. All these so, these were listen for them. That was a good Did someone <laughs> give it was a good left hook. That was good to me. <laughs> these are words that people are giving you because that's their map of the world at that moment in time. Now, um, we're sort of shooting ahead of ourselves here, which is good, which is really good. So um, I want to spend just this last 20 minutes, if you like. Nobody has to be aware, dead on R4, do they? Yeah. Sure about that? Well, you two, I'm going to have to go back to Glasgow. We're going to meet in a six. Oh, okay, so, so you're all right. Six right. 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 Okay. Yeah, we are. <laughs> it's, an exercise, it's an exercise I was going to do uh, uh, tomorrow, but we're, we're really moving quickly here, which is good. It means much more information. It means what I'll do, I'll be throwing little bits of the master prac in there as well for tasters. Um, and what I want you to do, you're going to go away with your partner. And we're going to start, you're really using hypno hypnotic language patterns in the context of solar modalities. Ooh, that's a very good one. Just going to think. And just to make absolutely sure you know what you do. What's a submodality? Well, if you think of the visual stuff as a modality, yeah, a modality, a modal operator, a submodality are the constituent parts that make up that visual signal. So what does he mean by that? The majority. Shape, contour, colour. Shape, contours, colours, distance, location. Right? And in the visual section here, got us that pen again. That's good. It's an auditory pen, I'm going to use Al just for this for a second. Just put your pen down for a second, mate. Okay, this is what you're going to do with your partner. You're going to say to your partner, okay, Al, I want you to close your eyes. Okay? And as you listen to the sound of my voice, I want you to see the things you're going to see, hear the sounds you're going to hear, and notice the feelings you're getting when we talk about this specific thing. Because what I want you to do is go back 
go back to a time when you were absolutely, totally confident about some specific thing. It could be confidence making a cup of tea, putting your pants on, wiping your arse, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Don't go for the big things. Don't go, oh, no, 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 When you're really confident about that time, you strip down that nuclear power station and the whole life of what's wrong with that. <laughs> That's what you do for a living. Okay, so pick something simple like you're really confident about. Something you know is something you do regularly. Now notice when I'm talking. When I talk about the visual stuff, I spoke quickly. When I started talking about auditory, I slowed it down and given the information at that speed and rate. And then when I asked how to feel what it was like to be that confident, I slowed it down. But guess what? I went there first. So I'm thinking of a time when I was totally calm. I'm fucking confident about this exercise. So I'm using that. Because me and Al have got rapport, so he's going to pick up on that confidence. Okay? If I stood here and chatted to you guys today and I didn't have any confidence about my ability or the material, you would know. Yeah? And I would hope you'd go, fuck no, Bob, come in, I want to work. Because I am absolutely confident in what I do. Because I wouldn't do it. So, Al, so I'm in that state. So, <coughs> pick the thing that you're confident about. Seeing what you would see. Hearing the sounds you would hear, and notes and the feelings you're getting when you think of that time. Have you got it, Al? Yeah, right, okay. Is it a picture in your head, or is it a feel? It's a picture in your head, right? Okay, we'll start with visual. Okay, always ask the question Is it one picture or more? One picture. Now, is that a big picture or a small picture, Al? Can you show me with your hands how big it is? It's about that big. Now, it's about what, eight, eight inches across, 68 inches across? Yeah, about, that about that big. Okay, like a small screen thing, is it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, okay. So it's, um, we'll say eight inches, nine inches, yeah. Is that square or rectangular? Square. Square. Does it have an edge around it, or is it hazy? It's got a clear edge, it's got a white, like a white edge on the front. Oh, right. Or oh, like a photograph. So you say like a photograph, is that two-dimensional or three-dimensional? Um, picture itself is 3D. Okay. It's, uh, yeah. So it's, it's like 3D. It's like a real photograph. Okay. Is it in colour or <coughs> black and white? Mm, colour, but mm, faded colour. Faded colour. Mm. Um, okay. In terms of fading, we'll talk about brightness here. On a scale of 1 to 10, Al, where 10 is really bright and 1 is total darkness, where would it be? About a five. Okay, so use a scale like that to get an indication. Okay, so now this is what I'm going to do. Notice what I'm doing. I'm going to repeat this back to Al. Okay, Al, this shows him that I was listening and thereby creates more rapport. Okay, Al, so this time you were totally confident, absolutely confident. You're getting one image, eight to nine inches in size. It's square with a white edge, although the picture inside of it is 3D. It's in color, level brightness about five. How far away from you is that picture? I notice it's slightly down. It's to the front and slightly down, yeah? So I saw him do that, so I'm going to repeat it back, which builds his trust. Because he now knows I was actually looking and listening to what he was doing. Okay, so it's down and to the front. Yeah. And in terms of distance from you, how far would it be? Two foot? Yeah, about three feet. About three about feet, arms reach. Arms reach. I'll, I'll say arms reach. His words were arm's reach, so I'll use that, he knows what that means. And when you're looking at that picture, can you see yourself in the picture, or are you looking through your eyes in the picture? I'm, I'm me in the picture, I'm looking through my eyes. You're looking through, now this is important, that's associated. Okay, just to make that clear, when Al is looking through his eyes in that memory, he's associated. If he could see himself, that would be dissociated, okay? Those are usually what you call trigger submodalities where you can do a lot of work with people. But we'll leave that for the moment. So, just to recap, one picture, eight and nine inches square, with a white edge, it's three dimensional in color, not very bright, indistinct, about five. It's down into the front, arms reach away, and you're looking through your eyes in the image. Okay, and when you're looking at this image now, do you get a feeling or do you hear sounds? What, what happens next? See, see movement, so it's almost all oh, right. So we've got movement in the picture as well, yeah. right? Let's put that in then. My fault. 
bell to put this down. So we have movement. So it's a moving picture, yeah? Yeah. Okay. And how does that make you feel when you think of a time when you were confident? Just so I can know what the outcome is going to be. Okay. Right, now, people will characteristically answer things like that. When you say, how does it feel? They'll start to tell you what's going on. No, no, no interest at all in that. When you have confidence, how aware is it? Where do you feel the confidence? Is it in your body, in your head, in your arms, in your legs? Um, it's in my hands, actually. In your hands, actually. Okay, so you get a feeling in your hands. Warm feeling, cool feeling, neutral feeling. Neutral feeling. Neutral feeling. The feeling you get in your hands, describe it. It's a feeling of strength. Okay, a feeling of strength. Is that um, a tightness, a tension? Right, more of a power, more strength, like a potential. You know, okay, power. now these are all words that I call nominalizations so really don't mean anything to me. I have my belief in what power I've got in it, but they're no use to me as a, in, in terms of finding the structure of this, so I'll ask you again. <coughs> you get this feeling in your hands, it's a neutral sort of thing. Is it hot, is it cold, is it tight, is it heavy? All these words mm -hmm. to describe what's happening with your hands. I understand what you're saying is about power. Mm -hmm. Is that attention? Yeah. Tension. Yeah, like a grip. A a grip. Tension. Can you feel that tension in your hands? Yeah. Okay. On a scale of one to ten, where ten is absolutely powerful, like all encompassing power, and um, one is no power and weakness, total weakness, what would it be? Um, probably a four. A four. So it's tens, but not two tens. Just about right. So you have control. Do you notice any other tactile sensations on your skin, anywhere on your body, on your head, your arms, your neck, your shoulders, your legs, your feet, your hands? No. No? No feelings in the body at all that you can locate? Think about a time, go back to a time where you're confident, look at that one picture, notice the, what's going on in the picture. I think maybe something like a pressure on my chest. Pressure on your chest, is that a good pressure? Yeah, again, a bit like a strength. Okay, so pressure on the chest. On a scale of 1 to 10. Probably a 5 or a 6. Okay, and we'll just have a quick recap. Is there any other feelings going out through your body? Just scan quickly through your body from your head to your feet. Remember that time of total confidence. So let's just recap. You've got a feeling in your hands. Yeah, it's a neutral sort of feeling, but there's a bit of tension there, up about level 4. And you feel a slight pressure on your chest at a level of about five. If I tell you to double that feeling and double it again and double it again, does it get better, does it get worse, or does it not change the level of confidence? Feel that pressure on your chest, feel the tension in the hands increase. Is that better? Mm. Yeah, you see how his face is changing? Yeah, double that feeling and double it. Now he's starting to go red, right? Now we're starting to get real changes. See, because we can play with this sort of modality to make you feel <coughs> more fucking confident. What's happening in your picture? Don't call out. Oh, say no. The colours are changing. So if we put even more colour in, what's it on at the moment? It, it was five. Yeah. What's it now? Eight, nine, ten. Crank it right up and keep cranking it up. So the colour improves. And the stronger the colour it seems for you, the more powerful it feels. Yeah? Okay, that's that's now that's even more confidence than you've had before. You thought you were confident in a situation. You can be even off the fucking scale in terms of confidence. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah? So it's just still one picture. 